Good evening and welcome to the first Beyond the Front page show for the spring 2021 semester here at Cuyahoga Community College and broadcast on Spectrum, Verizon, Fios, the Auburn Regional Media Access, better known as ARMA, as well as WIN 89.1, the college's radio station. I'm your host, Guy Cosentino. As you may know, we, since the uh, fall, we have been implementing uh, new proposal, uh, new procedures to deal with COVID and uh, health uh, protocols that have been required by SUNY. So with that in mind, we only tape one show per Tuesday or Thursday, and we alternate between inside government and uh, beyond the front page. And with that in mind, we'll talk a little bit about the future schedule uh, that we're gonna have uh, uh, later in the month. Uh, but uh, because these are college students directing and producing these shows, uh, we are working out on their schedule and front loading the season uh, so that they can end by the beginning of April even though we will bring you a Zoom forum with the Auburn Large School District. But again, we'll talk about that a little uh, later uh, in the program. But first, we wanna, we're want we delighted to have in the studio as our first guest uh, for the Beyond the Front Page uh, season, Chris Nusserino, who has been the Executive Director at the Auburn Y uh, for about six years. Uh, we've asked him in to talk about uh, what has been going on at the Y, and like many not-for-profits, they have been focused and if not devastated in part financially by COVID and what has been going on there. And so we want to talk to them not only about what they're doing to respond to the pandemic, but what programs they have existing and what's coming up, uh, uh, as well as uh, what the summer will look like because the Y runs a number of terrific uh, summer programs and we want to talk about that and what's going on in Skinny Atlas, which is also uh, under his purview. As a matter of disclosure, my family members are members of the Y. It may not look that I use the exercise uh, equipment, uh, but I do have a son who thinks the staff there, especially Kanga and Speedy and Miss Rose, are among the best in the world. Mm. Welcome. Thanks, Guy, so much. So, and he is spot on. All right, they and I, I, you know, <laughs> I mentioned that you were coming on. He says, "Well, you should." say hello and I said well I am going to mention Speedy but I said I don't know his name and, <laughs> and he wasn't being very helpful the, uh, first thing this morning. So let's just talk about the broader issue sure. uh, for you and for a lot of not-for-profits especially for you because you have a lot of walk-ins. Yeah. What's the world of COVID looking like for you and the why? Yeah it's such a, a different uh, time uh, like most non-profits and, and, and companies quite frankly in the, in the communities that we are in, uh, it has been uh, a challenge, quite honestly, you know, for uh, staff, for our community, for our members. Um, you know, the Y is very much a social place to be, and that piece got removed, you know, quite frankly. Um, folks weren't able to come for a good part of it. So how long year. were you shut down? I know you were doing yeah. some remote things, but yeah. how long were you, the doors not open to whether it was, um, children coming in for the pre-k or I don't even we'll talk about the, your weight program and your sure. your fitness program but how long were you literally closed down yeah March 18th uh, or March 16th sorry it's our uh, golden day we were just talking about that <laughs> that's right <laughs> everything got canceled March that day. 18th was in our head at that time March 16th we got the word from the governor that we were closing that night so really from March 16th till about June 26th when we were permitted to o operate our pool that was the our first thing that we were able to open uh, at that time uh, was a single person, single lap swim. So as a percentage yeah. of operations, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to give you a really hard math yeah. question, but the pool is one-tenth, one-fifth. <laughs> yeah. It's not 50% of your operations. No, it, it's not uh, on the expense side because it is very uh, Pools expensive. Pools are always expensive. Operate, yeah, operate, but, you know, uh, the, the pool side, uh, I would say, is probably about 30 40%. Oh, it is? Okay, yeah. that large. People join. Uh, you have your exercisers that are land-oriented and exercisers that are swim-oriented, and you combine that with swim team and swim lessons for families. Uh, it's, it's a good piece. So yeah. I do know that on Saturdays when I would be there for soccer or other programs there, you would run uh, meets for, I think, the Stingrays sure. and, and Auburn. Are those in operation at this point, or are they? Yeah, uh, they're not. Uh, okay. we're, we've been doing some virtual uh, uh, stuff. 
uh, with other teams when you talk about spectators being in the pool area that's not happening. So when you say either. virtual, is it be, you just do it, you time Yeah, people. you take the time, you kind of do it at the same time, but at your different locations and then share that information. So our aquatic staff uh, at, uh, at the Y and at the high school have all work together to try to pull that off. Okay, uh, but again, that is a, uh, there's a revenue side to that, yeah. an expense side that doesn't, that, that's often fixed. Yeah. And, and that's just one of the other issues you've had to deal with. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So to what extent have you been able to, uh, as we tape this on February 11th, uh, what have you been able to open back up? Yeah, so uh, we were able to open up our, our exercise facilities at a reduced capacity and wearing a mask. Uh, end of uh, August, August 26th, uh, we were able to open up our fitness facilities at 33% uh, capacity. Everyone must wear a mask. That, 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 that was probably one of the bigger uh, concerns for folks. How am I gonna be on a treadmill or elliptical or lifting weights while I'm wearing a mask? Well, the folks that have come back have found that to be very, very easy to do. It's, it's very manageable. Um, we were able to, even, even when we were shut down, we, we kind of forced us to do things virtually uh, or outdoors. So we were still operating uh, Zoom classes online uh, when we were uh, closed and couldn't open up our facilities. Uh, we were able to run classes outside uh, use our driveway in between the church and and uh, the Y uh, to pull off a cycle class. Um, so uh, that was very good. We were able to operate summer but day But those are camp. all weather. All dependent. weather contingent. Okay. You get a bad rainstorm, we're not having class outside. Electrical. Yeah. <laughs> Just, doesn't. No one wants to ride a bike in the rain right. anyway. So uh, we were able to pull off summer day camp last summer, which was a, a, a huge success. Uh, a lot of protocols in place that we had to put uh, with the state, with the state health department. That was uh, a tough on Kanga, uh, actually, to this pull that Melissa off. This is Melissa Carter. This is the only Carter. one I, 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 we will say. <laughs> she does, you know, and I, and again, I say this from my perspective, yeah. that she just is a wonderful person and doing a wonderful yeah. job. And I, I do want to talk a little bit about, before we get too far into this, yeah. but I do want to talk about summer camp and okay. what you have, because you have a lot of summer programs, Little League and other things that Absolutely. you all operate. Absolutely. So what are you not at this point, uh, other than percentages? Yeah. What are you not able to operate now that you did operate on February 11th, Tuesday, February 11th last year? Last year. Pretty much really high intensity classes, your boot camp classes, those types of things where it would probably be really uncomfortable to wear a mask in, uh, where you're in close contact uh, with each other, shared equipment, those high intensity classes. Uh, we were offering uh, Live Strong at the Y, which is a cancer survivor program as well. That's another program. Uh, those are folks with high uh, uh, risk, risk factor. factors okay. for sure. So we would like to get back to operating both of those programs. And do you think but you, and I will ask at the end what's going to be the new normal for the Y, do you think most of the programs that you have as vaccine, vaccines get rolled out and mm -hmm. people and you know, Kathleen Cuddy, who is a member of your board, will be here next week. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the busiest people in, oh. in Cuyahoga County, if not the busiest, it seems like. And she's been that. great, very supportive. So in her particular case, she's trying to get people vaccinated. Yeah. So if we get into that 50 to 70 percent range, which we would hope, if not everybody, mm -hmm. and that's a different issue, do you think you get back to a new normal that allows you to do a lot more of this? Yeah, I, I do think so. You know, for us, we've checked in with our membership throughout this time, uh, periodically. The common denominator was, uh, I need to get vaccinated or this needs to come to an end before I can come back. You know, Which we, is all practical and, and absolutely, reasonable. Absolutely, totally reasonable. So from a, so a year ago, yeah. how many members did you have? Oh, uh, between the two locations, close to a little over 8,000 members. And how are you We're doing on that? 4,000 members now. So little, you yeah. you did something uh, uh, different, and I only, again, know this from an odd source uh, in my house. Uh, you said to members, we understand if you have to quit. Mm -hmm. But if you can support us during this period of time, please do. We want to retain you. Yeah. Did you get a lot of support on that front? We did. 
Wow. Uh, Were you surprised at how many people uh, said? Surprised? Absolutely. Uh, and there's another part of me that's not surprised. You know, the Auburn Y has been around for 161 years. There's a lot of tradition, a lot of greatness uh, uh, throughout those years. So uh, it's not surprising at the same time. But yeah, definitely. Uh, we had a lot of folks just say, look, I want to keep supporting and sus sustain the Y. We know it's a difficult time. Let me let me continue to do that. So we are very appreciative. And how much does it cost to join the Y? Uh, for a family membership, it's eighty dollars a month. For an adult membership, it's forty dollars a okay. month. Okay, and that and that allows you to go to both Ys. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. So what's the, I, so those who are in Auburn may not know this, and hmm. people I think in Skinny Atlas do know about the Auburn Y, but in Skinny Atlas you have two rinks. Yep. Uh, pools there. What is there any change in those operations as well? Uh, are you able to operate the ranks right now? We are actually. Okay. Uh, we've been uh, offering a, a safe environment for skating uh, okay. during this time period, uh, swimming as well. Uh, in particular, with the governor just releasing the high school sports, we are now being inundated with uh, hockey. Uh, going on. <laughs> I think there's a Which game tonight. Tonight, yeah, there was yeah. one last right. night as well. Uh, we're the home team now, not only for Skinny Atlas, but Cor Cortland Homer, okay. who lost their rink down there uh, and are utilizing our facilities there. So, Is there a difference in the, I mean, other than rinks, is there a difference in programming between Auburn and Skinny Atlas? At, at the core, not really. You know, preschool, you get your basic. after school, health and wellness programming, Swimming, swimming lessons at the core. No, the big difference it would be the ice rink. Yeah. So sometimes it's all about the money. Yep. So you have been uh, having to deal with something you d wouldn't have expected, and that is a massive drop in revenue from from memberships. Uh, how have you been? And, you, and at the same time, you're also getting these requirements for cleaning and maintenance mm. that were unexpected. So those are all costs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have been lucky enough to apply. Uh, you've not been lucky enough to, but you've applied, but lucky enough to receive COVID, uh, COVID uh, impact donations. Mm -hmm. So what are those? Mm -hmm. So uh, we've received uh, donations through the Cuba Community Fund. Um, the United Way has been supportive, the Emerson Foundation, French Metcalf. I have to tell you, uh, it is a, a rare thing to see uh, the support and local support uh, from foundations and groups in a community of this size, um, even larger uh, communities that are so dedicated to helping to support the nonprofits in the community. Very fortunate to have them. So in a, in a normal year, what's your annual budget? Uh, we are a $6 million budget. So this year, what do you think your budget's going to look like? Oh, this year? <laughs> We don't know. Uh, we're, okay. We're, we're honestly, uh, we are January, December. We we're taking it six months at a time. Okay. It's what our board has asked us to do. It's really a projection more than anything because we don't know. Uh, but you had what's a tough happen next. second half of last year. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Last and, year. And the reason we I lost two million dollars. Okay. Year. So the reason I'm asking is so, yeah. COVID impact donations. Mm -hmm. How did? Uh, how much did you generate in that area? It wasn't enough to cover the $2 million. Oh, no, no, no. no. What, it would, what it enabled us to do several different things to help buffer uh, the requirements. Uh, for example, summer day camp. Uh, we bus kids out to camp. Well, we had to hire two more buses, so we got a grant uh, from the community, Cuba Community Foundation to help us pay for that. Uh, we had to buy uh, electrostatic sprayers, got a grant through the United Way to help us uh, support that uh, as well. Uh, we got a nice gift, really substantial gift from French and Metcalf Foundation uh, to help with operational costs uh, at the end of last year uh, to help bridge that gap uh, for us on a cash basis too. So let's talk about individual programs because I think that's what many people just go because they're, they're locked into why. Some are holistic, but many of them are mm -hmm. this program or that program. Absolutely. So let's talk about so you have a, a learn and grow program. What is that? For so those? yeah, uh, understanding the schools were uh, having a, a difficult time uh, having kids in school, virtual, uh, totally virtual. So uh, at the same time, having working parents uh, trying to figure out the school situation, right? 
So normally those kids would be in school, right? So they don't need daycare. <laughs> <laughs> So if they're uh, not in school, where, where do they go? And that's where the Y has stepped in on those days that uh, kids weren't in school, that they could come And you're to doing the this y. five days a week? Yeah, five so, days a week. So while Auburn might, are they mainly Auburn students? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so where Auburn is, is remote right now at two and, and yeah. two and then one day is supposed to be a prep day, you are literally running, many of your the students in that are two days or three days max, yeah. and they're in school the rest of that. Correct. Correct. Okay. So it's a constant turnover of kids. And I thought I saw that's a 30 plus or how many uh, children? Yeah, about, uh, about 30 a day. And so they're doing their homework there. They're doing they're some doing exercise. Zoom classes. Yeah. You know, we're getting them logged in for their class that day, quite frankly. So and going over lesson plans. And absolutely. And then helping them after the, <laughs> the classes no, I, and in I, between. I, and I can attest to this. So yeah. in that particular case, um, they also have an exercise component, so hopefully Speedy makes, I know one kid is always sweaty when I pick him up, uh, but you are also getting them in the gym Absolutely. or getting them out yeah, and doing that. It's a huge part is of that. that your, is that your most active program right now in the sense of people in the door and out the door separate from the pool and weights? Yeah, it's one of our actives. You know, in Auburn, we have the universal pre-K program, so that is about 130 kids. Uh, ages three and four year old that are with us every day. So at some point I thought I read yeah. you were doing it virtual at one point. Are they? We were at the end of last year. And then now they're in? They are in class with us every day. And how many, how large a staff do you have for just that? Oh, we got about 30, 35 staff. Okay. Absolutely. Teachers, teachers aides. And are those mainly Auburn kids? Oh, or are they? yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because those are slots and. and yeah, that's and pre, pre kindergarten classes. So low-risk classes. They're all wearing masks. They all have plexiglass dividers in between them. So the protocols are there. You almost have to say that sometimes children, young people, are easier to get to wear a mask than adults. Oh, yeah. They think it's great. Yeah. Especially if they got patterns. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it's a new fashion. Like our director who has, we just saw his teeth on <laughs> yeah. his. So, uh, so let's go to the, the fitness and the weight program. So you, you are operating that. So you go, if you go into the Auburn Y, uh, many of those, you have some cycles on the first floor as you come in mm -hmm. uh, from the driveway, and then downstairs you have a lot of weight mm -hmm. uh, li lifting and, and fitness equipment. Yeah. So where are you in that mix right now? You're still at a third? Yeah, still at a third. The weight room has been a very popular place, uh, uh, ironically. I wouldn't have thought that, but uh, uh, folks are not shy about coming in. And I guess wearing a mask and lifting weights isn't as vigorous in terms of cardio. So it doesn't seem to bother them. That's been a very popular place. How about things like the gym? You have two beautiful gyms. You got yeah. a running track on the second floor of one of them. Yeah. Are, what are you doing in gyms like basketball and, and yeah. whether it's young people programming on Saturday mornings or somebody that just wants to go in and get yeah. a ball and shoot hoops? So we've, we've allowed that uh, since we've been open uh, softly originally, uh, gradually trying to do it safe allowing families to reserve a basketball hoop. Don't have to reserve anymore. Um, uh, and, and Unfortunately. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> so now that the governor's kind of re released the restrictions on high school sports and so on, they can actually uh, play now, but with a mask. Um, okay. Um, so, you know, the, the kids have been, for the most part, respectful of that. Um, so, so that's been good. We just launched our first little basketball clinic mm -hmm. that we're trying for uh, six-year-olds to 12-year-olds. So we're getting some enrollment for that, which means families are uh, feeling comfortable and safe enough to come back mm -hmm. and do those types of programs. And, and I want to go back to the exercise for a second. At one point, were you loaning out equipment? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does that work? Yeah. Because <laughs> obviously, in my mind, I have a visual. Oh, yeah that see Stanley and Laurel uh, trying to uh, <laughs> move equipment for people to their house. How does that work? So uh, we were able to do uh, kits, uh, fitness kits, uh, dumbbells, um, weights, uh, bands, mat, yoga mat, those types of things that you could uh, rent out from us. Uh, and then the biggest thing uh, was uh, cycle bikes, the studio oh, okay. bikes. Uh, so you could, instead of buying a Peloton and spending right. and investing all that money, you could take one of our bikes and for a monthly fee, take it home and, and do your spin class uh, with us 
uh, virtually, uh, if you'd like, or do whatever else you would like, uh, and then return it when you were And that's done. worked out well for them? It has worked out amazingly yeah. well. So are they, amazingly are you still doing well. that, or? We're still doing yeah. that. Uh, do you think that's going to be part of the? I think w we are been forced now to do things that we kind of wanted to do, didn't know if it would work or right. not. There's no better time like now to try it. To do those types of things. Uh, virtual will be a component uh, for us moving forward. Uh, you might see a virtual Y membership for 10 bucks a month. Uh -huh. uh, you can just join us online and have that component and stay at home. But, but again, going back to your original comment at yeah. the beginning, the Y is a social place. Yeah. Always has been. Yep. Always will be. Yeah. And that's important. Yeah. So you don't run the ice rink at Casey Park, but you do run the pool, correct? Yep, yep. And so did you operate the pool last we year? We did last summer. And will you, is it your plan to do that this year? Absolutely. Um, it was uh, successful for us. It was a very safe summer. However, I think because it was still in the thick of the pandemic, the attendance was not as, as great as we would imagine. I hope with the vaccines and feeling, people feeling more comfortable yeah. that we'll see a bigger. So are, is year. your staff, A, qualified, but are they required to have a vaccine? Uh, no, we do not require that. Okay. We are encouraging that uh, okay. for those folks. So, so I wanna, before we get to summer program, because I want to talk about that because it's always an important yeah. program, uh, you also were doing something called compassion calls. First of all, what yeah. were they? So it was just calls to our members trying to stay connected. You talked uh, earlier about social component that's really what it was our, we had our, our front desk staff uh, who know all of our members to reach out and make calls on a daily basis just to do a check-in and stay connected so how many did folks. you do oh uh, hundreds if not thousands of them between the two locations that's great. Uh, and, and it was really important for us to do that and, I, and it made our staff feel connected and feel uh, meaningful and a, in a very tough time for everyone so you walked in here in a windstorm with snow <laughs> about 25 minutes ago. Yeah. So let's talk about summer. Yeah. So uh, the Y does baseball. Yep. What do you do, and will you be doing it again this year? Yes, we will be. Uh, we've been meeting with the Little League And I should board. say this is a man who has a, a son who used to play for the University of Connecticut. That's correct. In baseball. We love baseball. You're a baseball family. guy. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Uh, now you got to move to lacrosse. But I we'll do. That's a whole brain transfer <laughs> of knowledge. With your so others. I uh, get used to that. Uh, so, yeah, we op actually operated it last summer uh, under the guidelines. Uh, very this was at safe. Emerson Park, and there were two types. There was yeah. the ones in the fields, uh, the open fields, and then which were younger kids, yeah. and then in the two, in two ball parks. Paul yeah. Barks. So yeah. you will still do that? Absolutely. Uh, we did it last summer. Hugely successful. What a great time it was for those kids to do something after months of, of being shut in. So. And yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, when do you expect registrations for those? Uh, just kick it off. Actually. Oh, okay. Tomorrow, so I think. Tomorrow and sign up. Tomorrow. So then you have uh, you were not able to run uh, your overnight camp no. at the Y, but you did do day camp. Correct. Uh, any idea how many children you had in, I, was it seven or eight weeks? Yeah, we had uh, about 140, 150 kids a day out there. So uh, day camp actually picked up because the resident camp was not uh, an option uh, last summer. Uh, broke a lot of kids' hearts. Um, in fact, I was just on a phone call with uh, uh, Senator Jen John Mannion talking about the importance for us this year to get the guidelines ahead of time. Uh, so that we can open it and operate it this summer. So I know uh, in talking to your, your director, Melissa Kartner, yeah. uh, a.k.a. Kanga, uh, someone's going to have to explain that <laughs> at, at some point, she is still planning, hopefully, for an overnight yeah. component. Yep. And when, uh, when that will require the state to allow you to yes. that versus yeah. a county decision. That's a state. That's a state, New York State Health Department. And when will you, uh, I know, separate from whether you can open up overnight or not, and we'll ask Senator Mannion this next week because yeah. he'll be in that seat All next right. Thursday. Um, uh, when uh, will you start allowing people to register for just camp in itself, and maybe they have to adjust today versus overnight? Yeah. Uh, we'll be starting to, Kanga's putting that together right now. Uh, quite honestly, we just uh, got a new software program that we've been planning for the past couple of years. 
that we've implemented so we're, it's going to be even easier for folks to sign up for camp than it ever has been before. So she's getting that all in line. So we'll be uh, here in March uh, opening registration. So it's been a tough year for the Y. It was a tougher January, though. You had two losses uh, in both uh, Steve Kamenecki and Jim Courtney. Yeah. Um, first of all, for those who may not, and I cannot believe anybody would not have known <laughs> either of them, <laughs> who were they? Uh, Jim Courtney was the C prior CEO a couple CEOs ago uh, for 20 years. Uh, just a lovely man. Um, bear of a man. Bear great, of a guy. Great humorous guy. I mean, really just made uh, an impact on the community and, and that organization for everyone and, and the staff who are still with us that spent a lot of years with him. Um, uh, really meant a lot to him. So. And you did something to, uh, and, and Steve Kamenecki yeah. I, I wanted, it was a member of the staff up until last year. Absolutely. Uh, 28 years with the Y. Uh, Steve had just retired this past fall. Um, he was just a kind-hearted, good, good man. A and lot of similarities between Steve and th I. Th so. No question about that. They're almost interchangeable in a great, in yeah. a positive sense. Yeah. So the Y did something special on the 12th. I think it was the 12th of January. You and besides what you did yeah. closing that day, but what else did you do at the Y? Yeah, we, we uh, our staff, uh, so great, the great uh, staff that we have, decided to turn the lights on, uh, all the lights on in the Y building and on 27 William Street uh, to let Jim and Steve know uh, that we're open for them and that they will be with us forever and kind of find their way home to the Y. So that was really special and touching. And they, uh, you've recognized Jim Courtney already because yeah. of the basketball and there will be further plans for other things in the future? Absolutely, absolutely. We uh, decided to name the, uh, our large gymnasium, uh, the Jim Courtney Gymnasium, uh, last summer uh, to honor his time and dedication to that why. And Steve, we'll, we'll be talking about how we can honor him in the, in the near future. I want to go off on a positive note. You have a Y Pals program. First of all, for those yeah. who, and I know years ago we did shows on the Y Pals, but what is the Y Pal program? Yeah, it's a mentoring program for elementary age kids, um, utilizing high school kids uh, primarily at this stage. So uh, under the pandemic, we've decided to do it virtually. So uh, my staff have hooked up with the social workers in the school district uh, to target those kids that are strictly virtual. So how many show, uh, how many young people did you roughly have? We got about thirty. Uh, and then kids you, right now, you did a backpack in school supplies. Yeah, I think this is just very cool. What did you do? Yeah, we were able to uh, work with a local church to uh, secure uh, school supplies and backpack supplies and get those to the kids ahead of the school year this past year in the program. So I said there was a viewer question. Can you tell me what la is lava water? Is lava water? <laughs> I, I believe no those idea. and I, my <laughs> instinct is those staff will be uh, fired tomorrow. Yeah, but anyway, right. <laughs> and you don't want to get into that debate. Apparently, this is something no, I'm in. Okay. No. I want to end with one quick uh, yeah. item. I, we talked about what the new normal will be for the Y. Yeah. How can people help the Y? And how can the Y help the community? Yeah. So uh, helping the Y, well, come back. I think we're a safe place. If you if you've canceled your membership, come back to us. We're here for you. Uh, we have uh, done work across New York State to understand uh, the risk factors. We are at 0.0042% of incidents in YMCAs across the New York right. State. So that. Um, what I think the Y can do in the future uh, on a lot of fronts is uh, helping our community come back together. I believe there's a lot of trauma uh, that has been occurred because of the pandemic. Uh, in our community, whether it's kids, families, seniors, adults, everything from wearing your mask to staying socially distanced, how can we bridge that gap mentally for folks? And then we want to be at the table uh, in terms of equity and racial uh, justice in, in our community. So I, I look forward to beginning that work with our board and our staff. We're going to be entering a new strategic planning process here in the next couple of months. So our board's pretty excited about that work, too. We'd love to have you come back and give us an update. That'd be great. Thanks so much. Our guest has been Chris Nisarino, the uh, YMCA's executive director for both the Skinnyless and Auburn Y. They do a lot of great work locally as a not-for-profit, and they're dealing with some really tough times. So if you can help the Y, please do so. We'll be back next week with Auburn Mayor Michael D. Uh, Quill. 
who will be in to give us a city update. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to have him a couple of weeks ago because of the snowstorm, but we will have him on Tuesday, February 16th. And the next Thursday, we're, we are going to make an exception to the one guest per day rule. Uh, we are going to have two shows next week. The first one is with Senator uh, John Mannion, uh, who is the new senator for the 50th Senate District in New York, to give us an Albany update. And then we will also be uh, meeting with Kathleen Cuddy, our Q County's uh, health director, who again, we had to reschedule because of water main break last week. Uh, she'll talk about COVID-19, the numbers locally, as well as what the county is doing in, on the testing and vaccination fronts. And she'll have some numbers for us in regards to how many people have gotten vaccinated. We'll be bringing you updates in the next uh, couple of weeks with Assemblyman John Lamondes, the new assemblyman for this district. Uh, we also will have in two weeks from today, Q County Legislative Chairman, Chairwoman, excuse me, Aileen McNabb Coleman, as well as Auburn Police Chief Sean Butler will be with us. Uh, he retires this year from the APD. And we'll also have a show on East Hill Medical with their executive director, Keith Cutler. Uh, his agency was founded 50 years ago here uh, locally. We also have to bring you updates on the increases and in spikes that are not related to each other, we, we think, of domestic violence incidents as well as opioid overdoses. We'll also have our Zoom forum with the candidates for the Auburn Large School District. That will be in late April. Uh, I will moderate those forums as, as usual, and Jeremy Boyer, the executive uh, editor of The Citizen, will be uh, asking the questions of the candidates by Zoom. But before we go, please let us know if you have uh, questions for either inside government or beyond the front page guests. We do get them, and as you know today, we do ask them. You can contact us at cozguitho at aol.com or by mail at Inside Government, 141 Dunning Avenue, Auburn, New York. I'm Guy Cosentino for Cuyahoga Community College. Now, thank you for watching. We hope you are uh, well, safe, and we will see you back here in the studio on Tuesday.